This is our final video in the series, part three of three of a four part series about the student experiment. The three, three parts are about the actual write up. The first one was about what the assignment actually is. We're looking at the interpretation and evaluation this time. So we're specifically looking at the last section, which is about your conclusions, your interpretation of everything, your evaluation of your whole assignment. So you should be able to write up the final part of this assignment after all this. Remember, this is the assignment where we're giving you three unknown samples from a list. You've got to identify what they are. Back to our uh, marking guide again, our rubric, our ISMG as we call it in senior, Instrument Specific Marking Guide. And today we're looking at interpretation and evaluation. And like last time, we've got our three main categories. You either get this many marks, this many marks, this many marks. Hopefully you don't end up down there to get your mark out of six. For this section which all adds up to out of 20 for everything uh, what we're looking at is how you're interpreting your evidence how you're discussing uh, your reliability your uncertainties and so on and how you're talking about extending this experiment making it uh, better in future or further going further don't forget our paragraph styles we've spoken about we're looking specifically at these ones today so Evaluation section. Again, there's your title. Put that on there after the last section. You want to evaluate how confident you are in your conclusions. You know, was there tests that you did that you perhaps should have repeated? Or I think I, my substance is this, but I'm not really sure for these reasons. All right. You want to evaluate why you chose the tests you chose. Why were they the most logical ones to do? Was it just following the flow chart you had earlier on? What was it? So that's the first part. How confident are you with your conclusions and how confident are you with the tests you did and how you did them? Now, the next bit is improvements and extensions. And this is always an important bit. How can you improve your experiment next time? Um, can you repeat the tests more? Can you do other uh, more tests? How can you extend this experiment? Is there a way that it can be um, made to do more than what it normally does? Now, this is a bit of a funny section because... Um, down here, I've sort of said, sometimes we suggest two to three um, improvements and extensions. And the workbooklet did sort of have that laid out for you like that. But it's not really about having two or three improvements and two or three extensions. It's about the depth of what you're just saying. Okay. Now I've said here, extensions and improvements are an easy place to get another reference. So if you think about the depth of what you're suggesting, let's look at the extensions. Now, a C-level answer might just be, um, we use this process to identify more unknown chemicals. I mean, I mean, that's probably barely a C, to be honest. That's just scraping through. So what's a better answer? A better answer is, where does this stuff get used? Where does it get used in industry? If you can tell us where it's used out there in the world for identifying acidic soil samples in this particular application, if you're finding that, you're probably going to find out an industry that uses it or a company that uses it, which means you're going to have to look it up, which means you're going to get another reference. Okay, That's kind of like moving towards an A-level answer, not just saying, oh, we do this experiment more with more unknowns. It's here is where it's used in the real world, or here is where it can be applied to, or here is some other research that's happening. And that's showing us that you've really considered another way that you can extend this thing and it's really showing us that depth that we're looking for. So it's not about have you got two or three improvements and two or three extensions. It's how far into this can you go? And if you're chucking a reference on there, then that implies that you've really put a lot of thought into it and it's really considered versus just, oh, I've just chucked some in. Uh, don't forget this point here. Was there any possible uh, error or uncertainty? Perhaps some of you might have um, done your experiments at the end of one week and come back and completed more at the start of the next week. In which case, was there an issue in the changeover of weeks there or something like that that you can comment on? You haven't got a lot of words for this one, so try your best to fit it in there. With all these sections, I encourage you just to write what you need to write, say what you need to say, and then when you finish the whole assignment, look at how many words you've got and then work out how many you've got to take out. And then you can go back and do more proofreading and see if you can uh, shorten up your sentences, 
is the things that you could include as a figure instead or as a table instead or something like that so it doesn't quite always count to your word count. Don't forget we've suggested some paragraph styles here. The slam dunk is an awesome one for your evaluation or even your curveball is a great one to try as well. Conclusion. Again, there's your next heading, your right conclusion. So this is just a short one. It's only short, 20 to 40 words. Tell us what you found. What were the three unknowns? But don't forget this point here. Did you answer your research question? If your research question was something about identifying the three unknowns, then specifically state, we have directly answered our research question because we've identified our unknowns or something to that effect. All right. We suggest the robust conclusion paragraph style, which is a good one. This is a good one because it requires you to refer to the evidence. Don't just say, sample A was this chemical, sample B was this, sample C was that. We answered the research question. That's not a very good answer. That's probably in the 1-2 category. All right, 1-2 marks out of 6. To get closer to the 5-6 marks out of 6, you want to tell us uh, sample A is this chemical for these reasons, B is this for these reasons, and so on. That type of thing. Don't forget your residence list. Okay, list all the sources that are cited, particularly as like um, in-text references in your um, assignment. All right. Often up in your rationale, you'll have some of your background equations or your general equations. Remember I mentioned for your improvements and extensions, you might have another reference in there. And that's probably the main places you'll have your um, in-text references. Your equations should be referenced. All right, you've got to look them up somewhere, get a reference for them, chuck them in here. That'll get you closer to there. Use some sort of referencing program. There's, pl there's plenty around there. We do recommend a few. Discuss that with your teacher or with the library staff. Uh, finally, just think about your authentication. All right, you do live in the 21st century, hopefully. Um, you must uh, acknowledge your sources. You'll be working with your teacher in class, but don't forget um, there is heaps of plagiarism software out there these days, so we know if you've copied another student or if you've just copied from some other source. Okay? Just think that. Just keep that in mind. All right, that's the final part of our assignment. You should have what you need now to get your report written up. Make sure you work with your teacher, like I've said, and give them sort of uh, a bit of idea of where you're up to as you progress through this. Make sure you get your draft in by the due date and don't, uh, don't not hand in your final um, paper because if you don't, then you won't be getting any marks for it. All right, best of luck. Work with your teacher. And if you follow the process I've shown you, you can't go wrong. All right, thanks a lot.